Hi everybody, Pastor Andy Jerome here. I'd like to welcome you to the Swiss Elm Park Primitive Methodist Church online service. My good friend, Pastor Dennis, has an awesome message prepared for you that I'm sure you're going to be blessed. Enjoy. God bless. I'll be reading today from Matthew chapter 7, and this is verses 24 through 27. Matthew 7, 24 through 27, and it's on page 1501 in your pew Bible. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. Thank you, Krista, for reading this morning. Always appreciate the reading of Scripture, and if that's something that you would like to take part in, volunteer, please just let me know or sign up on the form in the back, and we would uh, love to have you be one of our readers. Each Sunday before we pray, we have the slide on the, on the screen to remind us to pray for our church. And this morning as we ask for God's understanding as he would speak to us, give us that understanding of just the truth, we also want to remember our church. So please pray with me. Father, we love you and praise you. We pray for understanding this morning. We pray that your spirit would just impart to us, Lord, the things that we need to overcome, to see clearly, to hear and understand and to have the courage by faith to apply these truths to our heart for your glory. We pray for the church at Swiss Home Park, and, and we ask that, Father, you would truly be exalted in everything we say and in everything that we do. May your kingdom expand because, Lord, of the faithfulness of each one of us today in response to your word. We pray this for your glory in Jesus' mighty and holy name. Amen and amen. Well, it's good to see each of you here this morning. And for the past couple of weeks, we've been looking back as a reminder with some of the messages that we've been uh, looking at. And a few weeks ago, if you remember, the, the, the subject was, was abiding in Jesus. And we took a look and to see what truly that means. And, and I got to tell you, j just during that message back home that we had a storm come through and, and it broke this one particular branch off of one of our trees and it was laying there in the yard. And so I, I've taken that branch and I, and I put it in our, our fire pit where, you know, we sit outside and have, have some fires at night. Uh, and I've been watching that thing over the past uh, few weeks now, and, and I see the, the beautiful, well, once more, the beautiful green leaves just continuing to, to shiver up and, and to have all the life removed from them, and now they're starting to just look just bad and and that thing just day by day continues to, to just wither up and die. Why? Because it's not attached to the vine. And so, again, that important lesson of learning and understanding what it means to, to be attached to that vine and have the nutrition and the strength that we need necessary to be what God wants us to be in our endeavor to do what? To go and bear fruit. And obviously, you know, a, a, a fruit tree is, in, is designed by God to, to bear fruit. And we have this blueberry bush at home, and there's blueberries all over it, and some of them have ripened, but the majority of them are still that, that, that green color, and some just have a little hint of some ripening. But for the most part, it's not happening. And I watch that thing going on and, and how it's almost there, but it's not happening. And then that branch that's lying down in the fire pit, and watching what happens to it, not being attached to the vine. It just reminds me of, of the importance of being attached. It reminds me of the mandate of, of going and bearing fruit. And then it 
we remember last week the, the challenge from Scripture was simply what? To, to be steadfast and unmovable because the, the world is, is doing its best to try to have you and me believe and understand that the gospel message, it's outdated, it has no effect, it has no place in our current time. The church has lost its full understanding and relevance in our society, and it's, it's doing everything it can to cause you and I to possibly throttle back and, 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 and lose our fire and fight instead of being what? Steadfast and unmovable. So we put all that together, and we get to this, this next uh, message for today. Krista read for us these pas the passage from Matthew chapter 7, and um, it, it simply uh, asks this one particular question. What kind of builders are we? Or as the slide would say, what kind of builder am I? Jesus was here at the end of the Sermon on the Mount making the declaration simply of there, there's two types of builders. One who's out uh, doing their thing based upon the foundation, the truth of Almighty God through Jesus Christ. And then there's other individuals who are out doing their things based simply upon themselves, based simply upon their understanding of what they think is right, and they're not standing upon the solid ground of Jesus Christ. So this morning we are reminded of what it means to abide in the vine. We're reminded this morning of the mandate to, to go and bear fruit. We're reminded that we need to be steadfast and unmovable each day as we desire to serve the Lord because during this process, what happens? We're identifying of what type of builder we are as we would be obedient to the Word of God or we would be, in turn, defiant. Now, this passage of Scripture today comes at the end of chapter 7, and you have to understand, when Krista read in verse 24, therefore, whoever hears these words of mine. Remember, as you study the scriptures, whenever you find and read that word, therefore, what do you have to do? You need to go and find out what? What it's there for, and chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7 is this whole message that Jesus gives during the Sermon on the Mount. Now, this particular slide shows uh, a group of people now, this was not a photo actually taken that day when Jesus gave the message, but it was a photo taken the day that Jesus gave the message during the Chosen television series. And so that picture is what you see right now, and I believe it was taken, they filmed that portion somewhere down in Texas, in the middle of Texas. I'm not sure if I got the name right there. But anyway, this picture shows us 2,500 people that the producers of The Chosen put together to have in place that day for the filming of the Sermon on the Mount. How many people were there? I don't know. We know there was a lot of people. Some people's uh, position is that particular day Jesus was just talking to his disciples and these people happened to be around, but we're taking the position that Jesus declared and made this, this known for all to see and understand because of all the things that life can bring to us, Jesus wanted us to know and understand the strength that comes through knowing him and the resolve and the clarity that he gives us as we faithfully trust him. And then you fast forward to the end of chapter 7, as Krista read, we find ourselves to be one builder who's relying on the promises of God, or we find ourselves to be another individual, another builder who's totally relying upon themselves. Now, here's something to consider. Life can naturally bring stress and anxiety. Who's ever been affected by stress? Anxiety. Who gets up every day and say, boy, I just want more stress in my life today. I want just to be anxious. I want to be overcome with fear and uncertainty. I want all the woes of life just to make their presence known and cause me to just be uncomfortable. Unfortunately, we, we deal with this, and as we have in front of you, this stuff comes naturally because of the nature of, of our humanity. And 
think about all the things that you encounter and you endure that produce this in your life and countless others that you know and how much of our world, how much of our day is just centered around the effects of stress and anxiety. And so when you think about the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is giving instruction basically to do this, to live your life. As believers, we want to be able to go and, and know what it means to abide in him. We want to be able to go and bear much fruit. We want to be able to be steadfast and unmovable. But at times, the, the woes of life and the stress and the anxiety and the fear ha has, has a way of overtaking us. We're called to be that builder who's building this foundation and who's establishing their life upon Christ but sometimes we get so distracted with things, we find ourselves wallowing in, in areas of quicksand that are consuming us. And, it, and it's so hard to live in many ways the life that God has wanted us to be. So you, you put it all together. Here's what's happening with the, the Sermon on the Mount. If we could summarize it in, in two quick points, we're called to reflect on what the world would have us to do. Jesus is saying, look, this is the world's answer to what you're experiencing in life. And then Jesus comes back with simply this. I want you to refute those expectations. I want you to live life in this manner. Think about that. The world's saying is the right way, and Jesus is showing us and demonstrating to us here what is the right way. And we get to the end of the seventh chapter, as Krista read, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, whoever hears these sayings of mine, Jesus is giving us that instruction again on how to live and how to be that good builder, and how to be that one that's centered upon the foundation of Christ. How many of you think right now you could give a, a recap specifically of all the subject matter, <coughs> excuse me, that Jesus covered in the Sermon on the Mount? How many items do you think he addressed? One, two, 13, 20? Let's take a peek here and let's read together what Jesus addressed on the Sermon of the Mount. Please read with me. Beatitudes, salt and light. Christ came to fulfill the law. Anger, lust, divorce, oaths, retaliation, love your enemies, giving to the needy, <coughs> excuse me, the Lord's Prayer, fasting, laying up treasures in heaven, do not be anxious, judging others. Ask and it will be given. <coughs> Excuse me. The golden rule. A tree and its fruit. I never knew you. Building your house and the authority of Jesus. Isn't it amazing what Christ has covered during that Sermon on the Mount? How many of you, is it fair to say, have had quite a bit of experience with most of these subjects from the Sermon on the Mount? It's pretty amazing when you sit here and you look at that and you think, wow, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, these are the things that Jesus is talking about as he's trying to give us instruction on how to live life how to refute the things of the world and live in a manner that's honoring and pleasing to him. And so in these chapters, this is what Jesus addresses, and that's why when Krista reads for us at the end of chapter 7, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine. So many times when we read that passage of scripture that Krista read, we think of the song, the foolish man built his house upon the sand, and the wise man built his house upon the rock, and remember, the rains came down, and, and the floods came up, and the rains came down, and the floods came up, and as that, depending on how many times you do that, 
The bottom line simply is, and the house that was on the sand did what? Went and splat. And then you get to the part where because of the efforts of the wise man and building his house on the rock, as the rains came and the floods came up, and the end of that song simply says, and the house on the rock did what? Stood firm. You see, these are the things that Jesus is wanting us to understand when he says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, whoever hears them and does them, Jesus says, I'm going to liken you to being a wise person, and whoever does not, I will liken you to be a foolish man. So notice what happens here in the passage as the scripture said, whoever hears these sayings of mine. Now, when I read that passage of scripture, it reminds me simply of the passage of scripture in Revelation when the Spirit is speaking to the churches and, and, and says, here are the things you have in the ear. And so you see the slide simply says, those with ears to hear, let them hear. And just doing a quick research in scripture, we find... 60 different references that deal primarily with the concept of having ears and being able to hear and listen and understand what the, the Word of God says and the mandate to us to be obedient. And so as we consider this this morning, hearing, God wants us to hear. Recently, Krista was going through some old uh, uh, or boxes of some old things and in, in the one box was, was, a, was a progress report. She found some of my brothers and, and, and one of me. And if I'm not mistaken, you, you said when you found the one of me, it said that what, I... So I, I was, they wrote me up as a good participator, but I talked. I know some of you find that hard to believe, but... That's the truth. And typically, when you're talking, when someone else is talking, what are you typically not doing? Listening. You're having your own conversation, your own thoughts, or someplace else, and, and, and it's really hard to listen. And you see, God has been speaking to us for how long? And sometimes, yes, we are listening. And some other times we have some other conversation going on and, and we're out and about doing our own thing. And think about this. 60 Bible verses that center on the subject of listening to the voice of God. Listening and understanding what he's trying to convey to us. And Krista read in that passage today, because of this, whoever hears these sayings of mine. Are you hearing God today? Do you understand and hear and know what his voice truly is? Many times we hear his voice when we don't want to do what he says. Isn't it amazing how that's so clear? We say no, and, and, and we run the other way. And then sometimes when we hear and understand what the voice of God is and what he's telling us to do, and we resist, we act like we don't hear. You can't have selective hearing and justify that before God. We are building our life. Each one of you today, you're building your life. And this slide represents that process. The foundation has been laid, and because of that, then the blocks are being assembled. And these blocks in this slide represent instances and circumstances and things in our life. And when you put them all together and we put them in a uniform way, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And you see here, as we are building our life, proper foundations are necessary. And so, as the scripture tells us this morning, as we are building our lives, the key and the most critical part of this whole process is that it is built on a sure and solid foundation. And that foundation is not other than Jesus. If you're building your life based upon some other type of 
foundation other than the solid rock of Christ, according to this passage of Scripture, you're foolish. And to answer the question, what type of builder am I? You're a foolish builder. Because your structure, your life, it's not going to withstand the storms and trials that will come your way. James chapter 1, verse 22 says this. Read this with me. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, but do what it says. How many times have, have, have we just, we've listened, but there again, we have failed to actually do what it says. How many times have you told your kids something that needs to happen, and you know they heard you, They've listened. Does that satisfy you when they fail to not do it? Oh, but I listened, but you did not do it. Because what does the scripture say when we fail to do what God has commanded and told us to do? We are deceiving ourselves. I'm sure each one of you get up every day as you desire to have anxiety and fear overwhelm you. I'm sure you get up each day and say, boy, I hope people lie to me today as well. I hope everybody I speak to, it's nothing but a lie. As a matter of fact, I want so bad dishonesty, I'm going to lie to myself. No, that's insane. So why would we do it when the word says when we fail to apply these truths, we lie to ourselves? How many times you've heard it said you're robbing yourself of many joys, you're robbing yourself of the knowledge or the blessing of what comes through Christ. And how foolish is that as well? You say, okay, you hold the metaphoric gun to you and say, this is a stick up. Give me everything you have. It's foolish. But we rob ourselves. And in this passage of scripture from James chapter 1, verse 22, we deceive ourselves when we do not do what the scripture says. In Luke chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus replied, but even more blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Another word for blessed in scripture is happy. But even more happy are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Isn't it sad that in many cases, Christians, supposedly Christians, have some of the longest faces, not demonstrating joy, not demonstrating contentment and peace and happiness. And friends, the scripture says that this is the case as a result of applying the word of God to our lives today. Matthew chapter 7, whoever hears these words of mine and does them, Jesus in Luke says, whoever hears them and puts them into practice, happy is that person. In this instance in Matthew, you're called the wise individual. You're called the foolish one if you fail to. Where are you today? Think about the question. Am I a wise builder, or am I a foolish builder? By the way we live our lives, and the way we practice, and the way we go about the things that we do, we're building upon one or two things, uh, the other thing. The solid foundation, or the empty foundation that has no stability. What do you see here? You see a young lady looking into a mirror. Now, I won't look up when I say this. Well, I'll look up first right now, and then I'm going to look down. I'll first ask before I look down, how many of you looked into a mirror today before you left home? Now I'm going to look down. How many of you should have looked into a mirror before you left home today?
So God makes me choke when I say that. <coughs> in James chapter 1, when we read in verse 22, be doers of the word and not hearers only, because when you do it, or you don't do it, you're deceiving yourselves. Verse 23, if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face. Where? In a mirror. For he observes himself, and he goes away. And he immediately forgets what kind of man he was. That's the first one. He looks into the mirror, sees what's going on, and the scripture says, immediately, immediately as he goes away, forgets the kind of man he is. Mirrors don't lie. Remember some of those mirrors? Like, I don't think they have them at Kennywood. They, they, they still may have them. I'm not sure. But you would walk through those mirrors, and some of them will make you look taller. Some of them will make you look skinnier. Some of them will make you look heavier. Some of them just did amazing things to just give you a, a misrepresentation of who you were. But we're talking about no pranks and mirrors, just a straight reflection of seeing who you are. This one individual, when they look in the mirror and they see what they're all about, they're in denial, and they walk away. But then James talks about the other one in verse 25, who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Then James goes on to say that this one will be blessed in what he does. Meaning, when we're looking into our hearts and looking into our lives and seeing truly and clearly what we're all about, we're prompted and we're convicted and we're challenged by the Spirit of God, as Jesus said in Matthew 7, to be a hearer and a doer and building that house on that foundation that's going to be strong and proper and correct. We're not denying, we're not running, we're not hoping you know, things just go a different way, but we're being honest to the truths of Almighty God. So what kind of builder are you today? When you consider what life is and what you're all about and where things are going, when you look at this slide and you ask yourself that question again, what kind of builder am I? Are you building your life upon the rock? Now, when you see this picture here, I, I saw it and I said, oh, it's, it's a beautiful picture of a home there along the water, and it would be a nice place to go take a vacation or a nice place to even go live, a nice place to go spend an afternoon for a cookout, to go swimming. It's beautiful, and it's also built on the rock. But one of the things that appealed to me as well in this picture was, if you notice, there's a lighthouse. And I believe when we're doing it right, and when our house is built on that rock and we're firmly established, it's a means of encouragement. It's a means of hope. It's a means of a wonderful testimony for people to know and see good. And Jesus says, the one who's hearing my words and putting him into practice is the builder who's doing this. And because of these things, we know and understand the fullness and blessing of God. Does that describe your life today? Or does this describe your life? Look at this home, building houses on sand. Look at that house. There's cracks through the foundation on the walls, and part of the finish is just coming off the exterior, and who knows what else is happening inside, but it's not in good repair. A friend of mine, many years ago, built a beautiful home, only to realize after it was on an abandoned mine shaft. One night, while in bed, heard this noise, and after he confirmed it wasn't his stomach nor his wife's making the noise, the bottom line was the house was sinking and it had sunk so much that he could not even open the bedroom door. 
Bureau of Vines came in and after $100,000 later pumped cement down into that mine shaft to help shore up that house to keep it. You see, when you're building something on a foundation that's not certain and not sure, one thing after another, and we're always running around putting band-aids and putting our finger in, in, in the holes to stop the leaks. Friends, are you building today your life upon the uncertainty of sand? Or are you building your life today on the certainty of the rock? Does your life exemplify the fullness of God? Does your life show Jesus in everything you do and in everything you say? Or does this picture here show you as your life in disrepair because the foundation is not sure? You see, you've got to understand that in both of these instances, whether it's the wise one building their house on the rock or the foolish one who's building their house and centering their life upon the sand. Each one will experience hardship. The Bible says, as the rains descends and the flood comes and the winds will blow, what do they do? They, they beat on the house. The wind the rain, and the flood. Both for the wise and both for the foolish, the scripture says they come and they beat on the house. None of us here today are exempt from hardship. None of us here today are exempt from trial. None of us today are exempt from things happening that aren't good. But we all are promised the blessing of God in our life as we are obedient to his word. And today he's saying simply this, are you building upon that solid foundation, that rock of Jesus? You want to abide in me? You want to bear fruit? You want to be steadfast and unmovable? You want to be that wise, that good builder? Then it all has to begin with yourselves being firmly established upon the rock of Jesus. I have one last question for you. And when you consider this today, look at that picture. It's pretty violent as that water is just raging and I can't imagine the intensity with it. But the question is simply this. What happens when the storms of life beat on you? The scripture passage makes it very clear that when that happens to the one who has built and centered their whole life upon the sand, and the uncertainty of stability. Friends, the promise is simply this. Not only does the house fall, but at the end of verse 27, it says, great is the fall. And the promise to the one who has built his life and his being upon the foundation of Jesus, the scripture makes it very clear that it does not fall. Oh, it may have the wind and the rain and the flood come and beat against it, but it does not fall. Why? Because it was founded on the rock. So this morning, that question we started with is the same question we end with. What kind of builder are you? Will you pray with me? Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. And thank you, Jesus, for giving us the instructions for life. And thank you for summing it all up. Basically, are we going to follow your word and way, or are we going to go about it our way? When the storms of life, Lord, prevail, we know what will stand, and we know what will fall. And so this morning, we pray that each one of us may have that certainty in our heart that we have been firmly established upon the rock. Forgive us for the times, Lord, that we may have waned and strained, Lord, on our own way and neglected you. Thank you for reminding us today of, of staying steadfast 
and unmovable upon that rock. We're praying today, Lord, for someone who may say, I don't even know who Jesus is, but right now I invite him into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. I want to be a child of God. Wherever we find ourselves today, Father, may this be the time that we are brutally honest and ask, Lord, am I the builder that you've called me to be, wise in following your word, or am I foolish off doing my own thing? Father, right now, may we understand what it means to be set free because we're standing upon a rock that is you. Bless, Lord, these things for your glory and for your honor as we pray this in the mighty matchless name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. We hope you enjoyed today's service. We'd love for you to stay in contact with us. You can check us out on our website at www.swisshomeparkpmchurch.com. Have a blessed day.